Good afternoon, Teen Talk family. I'm your host, Miss KK, and today I have with me the lovely Senya Robo from Project 150. Miss Senya will be informing us about Project 150 and their involvement in the Las Vegas area, as well as some advice for the young adults who are looking for scholarship and community service opportunities. If anyone has a question, please feel free to raise your hand and use the chat. Senya, thank you for joining us. How are you feeling today? Thank you for having me. Um, I really do appreciate it. I love what you guys are doing. I'm feeling great. So I'm glad it's Saturday. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just ready to share what we're doing here at Project 150. All right, well, getting started, how about you tell us a little bit of the origin of Project 150? Of course. We started in 2009 um, with just one high school, Rancho High School, and have now evolved to about 63 high schools around Southern Nevada. That's including mm -hmm. rural areas, so um, the, the Pahrump and Mesquite and all of that. And so what we do is we provide food, hygiene, clothing, and school supplies. And um, we do that all for free. So all the students have to do is show their student ID or some type of documentation that they're in school. And we'd be happy to help them um, in whatever way that we can. That's amazing. And it expanded pretty fast, it sounds like it. So how did you end up getting this idea that you wanted to start this? I know you started it with your sister, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we started the Youth Council. So my sister and I started the Youth Council in which um, does the fundraising for scholarships um, and kind of just has a mentorship opportunity for students, um, for high school students to be able to work with other peers and kind of just grow from there. Um, our co-founders, Don Perdue and Patrick Sparger, um, created this because they were natives here. Um, there was actually a news interview with Rancho High School um, who stated that they had 150 students over winter break um, in 2009, um, or 2011, I'm so sorry, um, 2011, who did not have the necessities they needed um, over winter break and I mean wow. two weeks without food clothing or hygiene so um, they kind of decided to provide those resources to these students um, and it became kind of like an accidental nonprofit but in the end it's obviously helping many. Of course and that's amazing so besides the hygiene products and all those things that you provide to students do you guys provide any community service opportunities? Yes, of course. So um, we actually have a warehouse off of Rancho and Gowan in which um, students, agencies, companies, anybody can come and volunteer. Um, 16 and older is our um, the ability for you to volunteer alone. And uh, basically all you have to do is sign up and register. We have the opportunity to sort through clothing, um, make food bags, and also work in our boutique. So we have a boutique that's open to our students um, on a monthly basis, they can come once a month and receive okay. clothes. Um, and this obviously would have happened before um, COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. Right now, we're just doing curbside pickup for food and hygiene items. Um, so our clothing and the volunteering opportunities is currently not available. However, we do have the opportunity for people to volunteer um, over through like social media, reposting or, or posts. Okay. Um, we're asking, we're going to start asking seniors to start sharing their stories and hope that we can start um, posting it on our social media. And Deshaun, I know you have a question. Yes, so I would like to know how has Project 150 adapted to everything being virtual? Um, well, it's definitely been new to us as well as everyone else, but the way we have been kind of working is uh, we first start off with just working from home, um, but realize our resources are obviously needed. And um, the way our curbside pickup works is that they call in and we talk to them over the phone and then we hand them the bags. So we put it like on a table. Uh, we make sure that there's that contact free between us and the um, our, our students and their families. And um, also with our volunteer opportunities, like I said, we kind of have that social media platform Right now, we're still learning uh, the ways that we can incorporate our community into what we're doing. Um, people are still donating, which is awesome, uh, whether it be monetary and or clothing and other resources. They still drop, have the opportunity to drop off to us. Um, it, again, it's just contact free. Okay. Yeah. No. That's amazing. Yeah. 
And so I would like to ask, because I personally have had the opportunity to go and visit the Project 150 site off of Rancho and Gallon, and just seeing the facility itself, it's very huge, it's amazing. There's always someone working and helping out and giving back to the community. So for you who has been involved in Project 150 for so long, how does it feel seeing the growth of the project altogether? It honestly feels amazing. It's, well, for me, I know that I was very naive when I was in high school. I graduated in 2013, but um, so long ago. And so I, I felt like I was naive to all of these things going on around me. Um, and I'm sure that happens for everyone. But yeah. to know that there's an agency now helping and giving back to my high school, other high schools, um, and the fact that we've come so far in these past nine years um, is amazing to me. And um, I can only see us growing more and more. And it obviously with this new wave of, not new wave, but with this wave <laughs> of social media, I mean, there's TikTok, there's Instagram, all these things. We're just trying to adapt in all of those areas to make sure that we're targeting anyone and everyone that we can um, to be able to make the impact that we, that we were wishing to do. Yeah. And that's great. So because of this new wave, do you have any advice that you would give students who want to volunteer so you said project 150 is allowing people to use social media so mm -hmm. for teens who are thinking about starting to get involved with their community or even have ideas of how they can help their school is there any advice that you can give them for starting their first few steps of course um me personally i've noticed um what's helpful is testimonies so um sharing a video about why you love this organization or how you can help this organization um if you're somebody who's received resources from our from project 150 or even somebody that another agency that has helped you um sharing how that made an impact in your life can go a long way honestly it really can um in providing the resources that that specific agency and or ours um, can give to the community. Right, that's amazing. Um, Deshaun, you have another question? Go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to know exactly how you guys are just feeling about everything that's going on. Like, how are you mentally with everything that's going on as far as you happen to fulfill all your roles? Right, that's a good question. Um, I think for me, I, I'll speak for myself and then hopefully as a group, but for me, I feel it's obviously overwhelming. Um, we're trying to figure out new ways to help the community, our students, um, because it's not just a student, it's the whole family, obviously that's yeah. gonna be in, in, in the need. And so uh, we're just trying to figure out the best way to help others as well as as a group. I mean, we're, we're realizing that we need to stay the distance, we need to do what we can to prevent anything happening um, luckily, we have our own offices, so that helps. And um, I think as a group, we are just kind of realizing that we need to switch gears because it's not going to go back just like in a split instance. It's going to take a while for things to come back. And that's what our executive director, Kelly Christo, is um, working with our co-founders and um, obviously the team to make sure we're making the best steps that we can because we're taking it day by day. I think that's any, what anybody can possibly do right now. Right. And since this whole COVID-19 is going on, but hopefully it's not going to be here for long. So do you have any advice for um, teens and college students for next year when they are going to school, maybe going to work and how they can balance the time to start actually doing community service at the same time? Because for me personally, that's something that I struggled with was trying to find the time to give back to my community, mm -hmm. although I already had so much going on. Yeah, um, I think my advice and a lot of the times I give our scholarship recipients is, first of all, I understand transportation and second of all, like the simple is sometimes what takes um, the easiest. So giving back can be as simple as, um, like I said, making a simple video or uh, writing a letter to a high school student asking us, for example, hey, can I be a pen pal to somebody? And I could, we could probably make that happen. And that's one more thing that you're added to do, but also simpler than you having to go in and volunteer right. um, and maybe making it a little bit more difficult. Um, the other thing is, I know time management is something I struggled with when I was in college <laughs> and even in high school, but kind of um, planning it out. I have a planner that kind of every hour on the hour, it's it's planned out. Um, I, 
ideally that took me a good two years, three years to make that happen. But as long as you're starting in that direction, um, it's, it's something that's very helpful. Right. And I didn't think about that. I think a lot of students now are because of this whole age of technology and Zoom conferences. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of innovation is going to come for this, come from this. Um, even for you guys, Project 150, there might be things that you guys keep around when all of this is over. So I think yeah. this has been a very transformative season for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And continuing with the scholarship, I personally am a Project 150 scholarship recipient, and I'm very thankful to all of you guys there at Project 150 and we recently had the opportunity teen talk to be a part of College Access Live and a bunch of our teens asked us some really good questions some that I didn't have answers for and I would like to ask you some of those questions and one of them um, specifically is when you're starting a scholarship application mm -hmm. what do you think is the most important thing to take the most time on is it the letter of recommendation is it the essay um, is it the questions on the application? What would you prefer or what would you say is the best to start on? Um, I would say the essay. So for our scholarship program in specifics, we do look at the application. We look at the letter of recommend, uh, recommendation. Um, obviously the transcripts comes with your education prior to, but the only thing that we, we that kind of gives us the story is obviously your essay. So um, our prompts are two different prompts. One is for current um, college students and one is for new um, freshmen and so the freshmen we want to know your story we want to know why you were brought to our scholarship program um, if it's not detailed in there then how how are we to know exactly that you're in need yes we can go based off of financials but because we specifically are a grassroots organization we want to think more than that um, and so being able to share your story what you love to do what's your favorite subject taking that time to just make it different from every other essay that you're submitting is really important because it's as easy as obviously copying and pasting because a lot of our <laughs> questions are pretty general. But at the same time, do your research on the organization, understand um, who they are, what they're about, to then be able to say, okay, I focus on this part of your organization. Um, that's really important, at least to us. Yeah. And Ajane, I'm just going to go ahead and let you close us off with a question that you have. Yes, so I know you get a lot of essays, but what makes an essay stand out? Like what catches your attention? Um, I would say the community involvement or just the involvement in school. So, you know, um, student council um, or even just tutoring, all of that. Um, while you're doing your own stuff. So, I mean, you're, you're working or may not be working, but you're doing your schoolwork, um, but you're also giving back to the community. Uh, that's really important to us, um, but we also know that's not something that's everybody's situation, but it's just always nice to see that even through the struggles or the issues that this specific student is facing, they're still willing to give back to others, and that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That is pretty awesome. And for any of the students out there who are actually able to achieve this, kudos to you because a lot of us are struggling out here, but um, <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you so much. And I just want to say that's all we have for Teen Talk this week. Thank you all for tuning into the Teen Talk podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Teen Talk Vegas 881 and also check us out on TeenTalkVegas.com. Senya, thank you so much for coming on this podcast and taking the time out of your Saturday. If you want to go ahead and put in the chat where we can find you and in some Instagram handles so we can tag you in some posts. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate thank that. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Thank you all for tuning into our YouTube channel. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Teen Talk Vegas 881. Stay tuned for more Teen Talk after this.